welcome back. Uh, today we'll start on the kit that is the Reliable Warehouse and Storage uh, Kit uh, 933-3014. Now we'll modify that building. Uh, the back part of that building would be attached in this portion here. Uh, the ends will remain the way they are. So that is a structure, as you can see, that is not a square. So now this part stay there, this part stay there, this one come here, and that will attach to this part. And from that, we'll be making a uh, totally different uh, building. Now, that will not be a warehouse, it would be a different kit. So, technically, this is the end wall that would be going in here. That's the front now that is being attached. I already done that. And this part here is the part that goes there. Now, the back of the building will be totally refit uh, using a uh, styrofoam core boards. Uh, this building will contain lights. Uh, so far, I do not preview to put any inside uh, details because where it would be, it would be far enough on the backdrop uh, to uh, not really see what is inside of the building. So now the next step uh, is to paint the building. Now the back has a first coat of black paint as you notice. I do that to all my buildings because they got lights. Uh, also to join those I use a rod if we go into uh, the rod, I use the evergreen uh, rods, uh, which is the 364 inch of a rods, number 221, as you probably can see here. That's what I use when I, I brought the two pieces together. Uh, you got the V-shape that was accommodating uh, the, the pieces for the ends. Uh, so <clears throat> I bring them together and I flood it with, with glue and put that rod in and then I, uh, it was calling for 3 8 of an inch uh, strip of uh, styrene which I put two of them which was uh, the 0 0.010 uh, and then I put a, a 0.030 uh, inch of uh, styrene uh, one inch wide which make the building now very very strong before it was flimsy with just uh, the uh, three eight pieces so now that that had been painted in black which will receive more than one coat really but I I put a general coat like a primer really on the back. Uh, now I got to decide uh, what kind of a paint that I will do on that. The model's pictures is a kind of uh, reddish brown on the building. Uh, I figured that I would probably go about the same type of color. What I do not like is the color of the windows. The color of the windows with that type of a brick uh, to me, if it was remaining that that color, uh, probably be okay. Uh, what I think I will do in there is go with the old fashioned ways that they were painting their, their window, a kind of a green. I will sponge over a very light coat of gray all over those window and doors and then after that I will apply a green 
that is darker and I would finish it with a lighter green just by sponging it all over the place so it will give the impression at that point that the window been painted a couple times and uh, uh, it's not necessarily a perfect job because you don't want it to appear like a perfect job those are what will happen next now I will make a mix because every every time I do a scene or a building uh, I don't have any recipe for any paint. I take the paints and I mix it so that uh, okay it look okay to me and then I put it in. Now I got to mix that paint so I can use uh, my airbrush to paint it so that it give me a pretty equal uh, paints. At the same time I would airbrush another coat of blacks on the back. Well, we'll come back. Uh, this time we'll do the window. So the window for the the first, I use a sponge here and you just want to give them a little bit spongy you don't want that perfect because that's not the idea now that building has got a ton of windows so as you can see you don't waste a ton of time doing doing your window here you see when I talk about uh, imperfections That's probably can categorize as one of them. As you can see now, from behind, really not totally done. The green I'm using for this specific uh, applications, it's called Christmas Green. And it's uh, a deco art uh, crafter acrylics. Now another type of green would be applied uh, for over top of this here in exactly in the same fashion of what I'm doing now. Now that paint is uh, a paint that uh, dry pretty quickly and there we are so the window are done on that color now for the uh, next color, I'm using Ocean Green, which is also a deco art uh, acrylics. I put a little bit of black, also deco art, crafter acrylics, and I mix with it some Christmas green that I have used for the first coat. It gives me that color. Now you do exactly the same process with this as you did with the other color. You don't want it perfect. It's a good idea to wear gloves nitrile gloves uh, because uh, as you can see the end of my fingers with the sponge get a little uh, dirty. Now the palette that I use are those plates that you buy at uh, the Dollarama, the dollar store uh, uh, they are kind of a, a plastic cardboard uh, uh, plate that you use for picnics and that type of thing. Sometimes they get a little dirty and so on and I keep on working with it and then you throw it in the garbage. So uh, you don't have to be to worry about you know buying those uh, plastic uh, in a paint store and then having to clean them all the time where you end up that you're doing more cleaning that you're doing modeling. Now as you can see all the window and doors for 
disc project are done. Except two of them. The main entrance door and the door that goes into the front. Now you don't have to wait that everything is totally dry before you do it. There we go. Now all the door and the window for this project have been done. Well now you can see the building has been painted. The two portion here has been added together. The back had a second coat of black. And now it's time to do the foundation on the back. We'll put that aside. There's the foundation parts in here. Now they had kind of been primed but they're not at their final stage because some of the parts are not painted properly. And what will I use to paint those parts is a dove a gray from Folks Art. Now the dove gray is kind of kind of thick a little bit so to thin a little bit uh, that paint I'm using isopropyl with a pipette and then you mix it up still maybe a little too it take very little you will notice that after you do this that your paint has the tendency to dry a little quicker. So we'll do the piece that will do your front to start with. Now that bring me to a question that been asked in the past about how do you tin your acrylics? Well you can tin acrylics with uh, water without any problem. Water from the tap, especially in the area where I am, have the tendency to have a lot of mineral through it. So I use distilled water that you can get at any, uh, you can get it even at the grocery store, uh, drug store, any of those places and I would tint my paint with that the acrylic by doing it with the distilled water the mineral will not come through your paint which is quite important now when I do uh, spray that acrylic that has been tinned uh, with distilled water such in the case of that building for the brown. I add on in there an equal part of isopropyl 70 and distilled water to the paint till I got the paint to the right consistency that I want. The paint dry quickly and evenly. And with the isopropyl the isopropyl not only accelerate the dry the drying of the paint but also help in having the paint flow properly and kind of lay on your project evenly and if I use my airbrush uh, I usually uh, use between 20 and 25 psi uh, to uh, spray it which is ample enough if you go with a higher psi uh, your paint will have the tendency to pool and run when you're doing that with the airbrush uh, you keep the airbrush at a certain distance so that you don't overdo it and try to keep the same distance all the time 
to every one of them. Now this will need probably a couple coats. And after the coats of the gray here will have been applied, after they are in the building, before I put the window in, I will do a pre-weathering of the building. And why I say a pre-weathering is uh, on my workbench I have exactly the same lighting that is on the layout but not everybody does. Uh, I could probably weather it a little more at the workbench uh, when I do a project other than vehicles but I'm a firm believer that uh, the best weathering is right where you will place uh, your model because then you can uh, have your building totally integrating with your scene. Uh, if they are pre-weathered totally on your workbench, uh, a lot of time they would be too weathered. If they're not weathered enough, it's fine, but uh, majority of the time they are too weathered because uh, the weathering from one place on the layout to the others sometimes is a little bit different depending on the scene that you want to build. Now this painting here of the foundations uh, as you notice uh, is not necessarily the smoothest and that is on purpose. I don't want it too smooth because it's got to go and look like concrete that's been there for a while so you will see why when I do the weathering on it and I want to have some grip for the weathering now this is the piece here before that's the piece after you see the difference in the color of the gray there now like I told you when we started this uh, project is, is no interior scene inside of that building so uh, I do not want to spend an eternity in regards of the windows so the windows would be uh, using the method of sanding the window with sanding paper so that will frost every window all window will look frost and put them in and as I put the electrical inside of the building because it's light on that building regardless if it's a scene or not the light will come out but without having us distinguishing anything really inside of the building so you do not have uh, to start to use partitions or anything of the sort as you can see it doesn't take an eternity that is it's just a very very straightforward uh, kit bash on on that specific building is nothing nothing special on this on this one it's just a modification of a kit technically what I'm trying to say to you is you do not necessarily have to assemble a kit as per the kit is if you notice uh, at hobby shop uh, you can buy background building and you can buy the full building you know the, the full kit you probably already noticed uh, through my video that uh, I buy the full kit I don't buy the uh, background kit I will say I never did because I did but I don't like to buy just a background kit the background kit doesn't cost too much less if you notice than the full kit if you buy the full kit and you're making a background model for your for your railroad you have to remember that what you're not using on that specific project you will use somewhere else when you kit batch something if you buy a background kit only well what happened is uh, now you don't have any spare parts you know to uh, to build something else is an advantage of buying the full kit one might be uh, let's see 39.95 and the other one would be 45 uh, or 49 it totally worked the different worked the difference in between uh, 
uh, the two kits. And that's one of the reasons why I always buy a full kit because I, it gives me some opportunity and some possibility of doing other things. Well, now that uh, we have the glass put on our windows, it is time to frost them. And to do that, we'll be using a sandpaper, which is an 80 grit. You can use other kind if you want. The idea is just to make them crusty. I left them on the sprue because there's so many of them. And that's what happened to the window. So if you turn it around and you look at the window that are here on the top and with the difference from the bottom. So you got frosted window, your light will still go through just that we should be. But you won't see no evidence of an interior scene. So here I think you got a pretty good idea of what I would be doing in there. Now, let me show you what happened to this uh, building since the last time uh, we were working on. Now, all the gray on the tops, the little sliver here of gray. Well, you see it a little bit more in here, I guess. So, and some other gray have been put on the on the foundations. Uh, all the seal of the window have been painted gray also. So that being done on the on the three parts of the building itself. So now the only thing needed on that building is some weathering, uh, minimal weathering. Uh, which I will do off camera and uh, finishing to uh, frost the window and then we'll start to assemble the building. Now it is easy to compare the building. Now that's the building the way it was and now if you compare the two you can see the difference. Uh, to achieve this look, which is the primary weathering, I use a truck, just a regular truck. I will just do a corner in here, so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. Well, I just slightly uh, run my truck over. Do a lot of covering. Even run it a little bit over the base. Now I take my brush here and I rub it. All over the place. That I have covered with that chalk. Now, this is you can use other powder too, which I will probably do to. Uh,
the idea why I use this technique on this specific building is for the simple reason that I want to light up the building. Anyway, this is what it gives you when you look at the two. Now the next step I will do, I will go to my spray boot and with my air gun uh, just shoot some air to take out the powder that is in excess and then after that I will go to the next uh, step of pre-weathering the building and finish the weathering on the layout. Now you can see I hope you can in the camera how much is the concrete seal and that popped out by doing it. On the bottom in here I will more than likely use in here uh, India ink and so is on the little ledge here. India ink with uh, isopropyl 70 uh, you mix it to your needs and then put it in and it creates uh, definitely uh, like the bottom of the building is a little bit dirty. I will keep doing in this and I will show you the final result. Mm -hmm.